Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on radiate emission. Okay, so under radiate emission, basically will be CISPR 11 and also CISPR 32. CISPR 11 and CISPR 32, they are mainly for Europe. We also have this FCC Part 15 and also part 18. And again, FCC standard, you can relate to USA. Okay, so like what I mentioned earlier on, these are all four under radiate emission. But keep this in mind, CISPR 11 and 32, and also FCC part 15 and 18, is also available for conducted emission. Okay, but for this video, I'm going to concentrate on CISPR 11, and I'm also going to concentrate on radiate emission. This will be the part 52 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe to this channel. Guys, please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. This is what I have been going through. Basically in this diagram shows all the commonly used EMC standard for a consumer electronic product, which does not have any wireless communication. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to concentrate on radio emission and mainly I will be discussing on CISPR 11. Okay, so later on you will realize that CISPR 11 and CISPR 32, okay, CISPR 32 is mainly for multimedia. Okay, so later on, okay, if time permit, okay, I will further discuss on this. Okay, as for part 15 and part 18, okay, I will leave this discussion on the next video. The International Special Committee on Radio Interference, okay, which is called the CISPR. Okay, so basically this is the English name. I believe this is actually a French name. So this is how they get the name CISPR. C I S P R CISPR. Okay, basically dated to 1933. Okay, basically they have a conference. Okay, basically consists of all the international group. They actually met in Paris, so therefore I think this is a French word okay, to find a way to deal with radio interference. As you can foresee that at that period of time, okay, we actually start to have more and more comms, wireless comms. And because of this, okay, you can also potentially imagine that they are going to be having more and more interference. Basically, this group agreed that uniform measurements method will needed to measure RF emission. During that, will make international trade easier and improve radio operation. Okay, so basically this is the objective of this group, the pioneer group. Basically they face an issue of radio interference and basically they meet and decided okay, to have a uniform measurement method to measure the RF emission. CISPR 11 is an EMC standard okay, mainly for ISM, industry, scientific, and medical. Okay, so imagine these are all the free band that any comms can actually utilize now. Okay, basically, as what you mentioned here, CISPR 11 is initially published in 1975 and is the basic emission standard incorporated into EN 55011, okay, which is the Europe norm used in the Europe Union. Okay, the goal of CISPR 11 is to define limits, okay, so the limit line for CISPR 11 for the RF emission from ISM equipment to ensure that this emission do not interfere with other electronics device and also radio communication system. So this CISPR 11, like what I mentioned earlier on, basically okay, they make use of higher frequency. Okay, because once you have a higher frequency, 
hey, you are going to have more and more RF emission. And we actually need this CISPR 11 to define the limit line so that all the equipment, ISM equipment, will be able to work by not creating any interference with other electronics device or radio communication system. Compliance with CISPR 11 help to ensure that ISM equipment can actually coexist with other electronics device and does not cause harmful interference in the radio frequency spectrum. So you can see that by setting a limit line, okay, we actually ensure that the device that you actually manufacture, they weren't able to cause interference to other electronics device. So therefore, they can actually coexist with all the electronics device. CISPR 11, okay, we have the limit line so as to ensure that we don't radiate large and harmful okay, electromagnetic wave okay, so as to harm our human so-called health. So basically, this will be the goal of CISPR 11. CISPR 11 cover both the radiate and conducted emission requirement related to RF disturbance in the frequency range of 9 kHz to 400 gigahertz. Okay, but I guess you know that I think it's quite difficult, quite challenged to test on 400 gigahertz. Okay, at this moment for RE radiate emission, okay, the testing we stop around 6 gigahertz. Okay, so basically 400 gigahertz is a little bit far stretch. Okay, again, we will come into this discussion later on. It also cover UV radiating and conducting equipment operate at frequency within the ISM band defined by the ITU radio regulation. CISPR 11, basically they can be classified into two groups and also two class. Okay, so the first group, okay, this group cover ISM equipment that generate RF energy necessary for its internal function. Okay, which means that you build a device, they don't actually radiate out in order to function. So basically, it's called an internal function, which means that they don't radiate up. For example, we have laboratory equipment, semiconductor converter, medical electrical equipment, industry management, and control equipment. So you can see that basically, they don't need to radiate up in order to function. So basically, they fall under group one. As for group two, okay, this group cover ISM equipment that intentionally generate and or use RF energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, okay, which means that under grip 2, basically they release an electromagnetic wave okay, intentionally so as to ensure that it works. Okay, for example, the example will be Wi-Fi. Okay, so if Wi-Fi don't release electromagnetic wave, then probably we cannot comes at all. So basically you can see that Wi-Fi basically release the electromagnetic wave in order to work. So basically they fall under group 2. As for group one, they don't actually need to radiate out in order to work. Okay, we have also medical scanner. Okay, my mechanical scanner basically you need them to radiate up certain electromagnetic wave, and then you basically have the scan image here. Microwave oven, same deal. Mobile phone, okay, same as Wi-Fi, they need to establish com in order to work through EM wave, and also wireless charger for mobile phone microwave, lighting, appliance, etc. Okay, so with this, I think you have a better idea the difference between group one and group two. So guys, if you felt this video is helpful, okay, please consider to like this video and also subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Okay, CISPR 11 is classified into two groups and two class. Early on, I have done the two groups. So now I will be doing the two classes. Okay, class A is defined as equipment suitable for use in all locations, everywhere, industry, public area, other than those located in resident environment and those directly connect to a low voltage power supply network with supply building used for domestic purpose. So in short, okay, class A okay, mainly is for industry use, not for so-called domestic purpose. In another word, this is what I mean. Industry and heavy commercial equipment fall under class A. As for class B, okay, it's the reverse of class B A. 
Okay, class B is mainly for domestic use. Okay, you can see it here, class B equipment is suitable for use in location in resident environment and in establishment directly connected to a low voltage power supply network with supply building use for domestic purpose. Okay, these are the device typically used in a home or in a light commercial application. Okay, so once you make your product, okay, you decide where you want to sell your product. Okay, if your product will be selling to industry, then they will be testing against class A. So your product is strictly, okay, strictly to use in a domestic, okay, which is home. Okay, then you can use this class B to test. But if you have a use case that will be using either industry or resident, then you need to use class A to test. Okay, because class A is more stringent as compared to class B, okay, which we are going to further discuss on the next video. Okay, so these slides here okay, summarize what I have discussed early on. Okay, so basically, as I told you that CISPER 11, they have two groups. They have also two class. Okay, so basically, you can see that these are the four zones here. So under the group one, okay, you can have class A and class B. So for class a, okay, basically the RF energy may or may not be used for the internal function. Okay, so basically it's mainly used for industry environment. Remember class A is mainly to use for industry environment. So therefore you can see over here, there are many used for industry environment. Group one and group two, the difference is basically, these are basically don't class group one, they actually don't need to radiate in order for the device to be function. As for group two, you can see that it need to radiate out in order for the device to work. So over here, summarize the two groups and also the two classes of CISPER 11. In short, group one over here, basically they don't release electromagnetic wave in order to work. Group two release electromagnetic wave in order to work. Class A mainly are uh, used for industry environment. As for class B, mainly used for domestic environment. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.